States. Senator Cassidy. Hey, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, sir. Um, we had kind of let you, thank you for you know, the dialogue before the meeting. We told you we're concerned about how do we know the people at HHS are working? Uh, so let me put this picture up. This is a picture taken at 1040 a.m. last Monday at uh, an HHS headquarter. It's like empty. And then we, got, we could have pictures of other parking lots that are similarly empty. Uh, so, um, um, you know, wow. The building's empty. If there's no cars, the building's empty. So we just appropriated $3 billion. Well, first, tell me this, please. Can you give a breakdown of how many full-time employees are at their desk in one of these buildings every day? Senator, when you, um, when you take a look at the workforce at HHS, and we're close to 90,000 throughout the country, um, and working in various parts of the country, uh, some here in headquarters. By the way, headquarters, we have an underground. I got limited time, so, so this may be misleading. So tell me, of what percent of the employees are at their desk, full-time employees are at the desk on any given day? And I don't mean to be rude, it's just so limited time. No, and I, I appreciate that. And our, our folks are working full-time. No, but how many are at their desk as opposed to being at home or well, someplace else, a well, coffee we, shop or whatever? Yeah, we, what we make sure, sure we care about is that they're performing and they're delivering, and that's why. Well, that's not really answering my question because I know the best practices now in many industries is to bring people back in. So is it 5%, is it 10%, is it 1%? How many folks are actually sitting at their desk in a government building when they are working full-time every day? And we have folks who, as they're working full-time, So you, that's it's kind of not a, <laughs> clearly, sir, you don't want to answer that question. And I don't mean to be rude, but you don't. And that kind of begs that the answer may not be flattering. Uh, when CMS put out, a uh, request for employees uh, as regards to the complex drug negotiations that was in a recent bill. Uh, the posting offers generous telework policy. What does generous telework policy mean? If somebody hired into that program, how many days a month would they be expected to actually be in a government building as opposed to wherever they wish to be? And, Senator, that would depend on the workers. Some people have never left their job, even during the height of the I'm not speaking about leaving their job. I'm speaking about being at their desk. And not speaking of some, but of a percent, if I may, because anecdotes are not data. You're limiting the scope of what we do. We have investigators who never sit at desks. Elvis, say, take somebody who traditionally would have been at their desk before the pandemic, please. And depending on, on the work that has to be performed, they will be in the office at times. Sometimes they may be in the field. But what's Can I ask just for, uh, for the record, because obviously it doesn't seem, Mr. Secretary, you're prepared to answer that question. But for the record, can you give us a percent of the actual workers who have full time, who would be expected to be at their desk, not an inspector in Louisiana, but someone else, uh, if you can give it that for the record? We could follow up, Senator. Um, do we, do you, can, can the agency provide us VPN data or some other measure of accountability that shows that the people truly are working from home? We can certainly show you that they're performing. The fact that 700 million shots have gone into the arms of Americans. But do you have that VPN data? Because initially when the pandemic started, we saw VPN data that showed a double digits number of employees were not turning on, turning on their VPN every day. And so it suggested they were not accessing emails, for example. Uh, so is that data still being collected? If so, can you share those results? I could try to get back to you on that. Uh, now, if you live in the D.C. area, you get a work differential. Um, so you get a little bit more. Your cost of living is more. Um, so is someone who is in this building with an empty parking lot, uh, is someone in that building not knowing where they are currently working, uh, are they still getting a cost of living adjustment as if they are working in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, first I have to tell you, uh, Senator, that, that is not the headquarters of the HHS, uh, of the Department of HHS. Okay. We, it is we, CMS headquarters. Oh, okay, okay, so uh, what we can get back to you on. Is someone working, as I said, we have been coming in day in, day out. But, but, we but, have but, been my, but my, day in, day out. But let's assume that because I've, I've heard from people within the agency that in reality people are only required to come in one day out of a month. Uh, and this has been something we've heard from CDC along those lines, but I've also heard from somebody who's working at CMS. Now, I assume that you have a global policy because you have the same union negotiating for all of HHS. So, I, I, so it's, it seems to me as if it's going to be the same policy wherever you are. So my question is, if you are working from home consistently, and originally you were based in D.C., are you still getting a cost of living adjustment even though we frankly don't know what we're, you, you might be flying in one day a month but living in West Virginia? 
against it, or I'm not familiar with this statistic that you're throwing out that says. But is there a cost of living adjustment for people who are taking advantage of generous telework? There is certainly a cost of living adjustment for folks who work in high cost areas. Uh, even if they are teleworking? If they are performing their work, uh, they are entitled to receive a cost of living adjustment if they work in a high cost living area. And when you define work in a high cost living area, do you mean telework? I mean, for they could be in, their VPN could show them in DC, but they could be in West Virginia. So are they getting paid as if they are living physically and showing up every day and parking in that parking lot every day uh, in the DC area? So you would have to take a look at the particular job description to find out what type of work is done and where they are located to be, to be able to make that determination. Um, I yield.